new images indicate that these tiny satellites have taken the rings to new heights. August 11, 2009. A rare equinox photo of Saturn shows her rings edge on to the sun. The image unveils a shocking fact. The bright bands that once appeared to be solid and flat actually contain ridges spanning from a few feet to mountain ranges taller than the Alps. When you look at Saturn's rings from a telescope on Earth, they look completely smooth and featureless. But now that we see that there are regions where the ring particles are piled up into what you could call mountains, which can be several miles high. But how are these mile-high mountains formed? NASA's Cassini mission actually captured images of embedded moons sweeping through Saturn's rings, causing them to twist and ripple, creating ever-changing patterns. In Saturn's A ring, the outermost of the large bright rings, the moon Daphnis has carved a vertical peak which is over two and a half miles high. The moons are interacting with Saturn's rings in such a way as to either pull material slightly above the ring or below the ring as the moon goes round, because its orbit doesn't quite match that of the ring itself. The ring system surrounding Saturn is a spectacular sight. But on a neighboring planet, a very different scene, one almost too monstrous to believe. It's number five in our countdown of the seven amazing wonders, a raging storm that's nearly three times the size of Earth. As we continue our countdown of the seven wonders of our solar system, we leave behind number seven, Enceladus, and number six, the rings of Saturn. We now blast off to number five, Jupiter's great red spot. mother of all storms is about three times the size of Earth. We don't know exactly how the red spot formed. It's been there as long as we've been looking, uh, as far back as the 1650s. So it was there before we started really paying attention. The great red spot is actually an ancient storm that's been spinning wildly for centuries. The supersized vortex towers five miles above the planet's cloud tops and dwarfs any storm system on Earth. The 400 mile an hour winds measured in Jupiter's great red spot are faster than some of the most powerful winds measured in tornadoes here on Earth. Yet tornadoes on Earth only last maybe a few tens of minutes or at most a couple of hours. Whereas Jupiter's great red spot's been going strong for at least 400 years, and it's three times the size of Earth. Now that's one storm you don't want to get caught in. Most tropical storms in Earth's southern hemisphere spin clockwise as our planet rotates. But on Jupiter, the great red spot follows an unearthly path. The great red spot which is in Jupiter's southern hemisphere, rotates counterclockwise. It's anticyclonic. And that's because it's a high pressure system, unlike the low pressure systems here on Earth associated with storms. So when you have a high pressure system, the airflow is naturally the opposite to that of a low pressure system. The origin of this long lived storm has baffled astronomers. But now, science may be on the verge of unraveling its stormy secrets. The Hubble Space Telescope recently snapped images of three smaller storms on Jupiter called white spots. Within three years, the three white spots merged to form one Earth-sized storm. Then, 
the unexpected happened. Over the course of only about a week, the storm turned from white to bright red. It's now known as Oval BA, or sometimes Red Junior. Why it turned red and exactly how that happened is still a mystery. Astronomers now suspect a similar merger may have also created the Great Red Spot. And like Red Junior, the ferocious storm may have originally been white. But as its speed grew faster, it began dredging up material from deep in Jupiter's atmosphere. One of the compounds could actually be a form of sulfur. We don't fully understand why the red spot has its characteristic brick red color, but probably there are chemical compounds which are reacting with the sunlight and are giving it this color. Astronomers have been closely monitoring the Great Red Spot. And in the last decade, they have detected an astonishing change. We've been watching the Great Red Spot shrink and actually become rounder for some time now. Who knows if it's going to persist for another 400 years or maybe disappear entirely. The Great Red Spot is by far the biggest storm in our solar system. But after leaving Jupiter, we head about 200 million miles in the direction of the sun and have a close encounter with another barely believable wonder, number four, the asteroid belt. Scientists want to know more about the origin of this cosmic junkyard of wayward debris, which is left over from the formation of the solar system. For a long time, we thought that maybe there had been a planet there that got pulverized and we were just seeing the debris of some major catastrophe. But uh, we pretty much now realize that a planet never was able to form there the gravitational pull from Jupiter and the other planets just made it impossible for material to coalesce into a planet. We traverse through 100 million miles of rocks, some as small as several feet, others bigger than cities. The belt probably contains millions of rocky pieces. Yet if all the asteroids were condensed into one boulder, it would be smaller than our moon. We can start to learn more about the history of our solar system by studying the small bodies in our solar system, the asteroids. We'd like to know how they moved around, you know, how are they affected by the giant planets, and what is their ultimate fate? What will happen to them? Popular movies have portrayed the asteroid belt as a cosmic obstacle course, a place where spaceships dodge enormous boulders that constantly collide and jostle for position before hurtling down from space to destroy planet Earth. But has Hollywood gotten it wrong? How congested is the asteroid belt? That's what one viewer wanted to ask the universe. So, Joel T. from Kansas City, Missouri, texted us. Have movies accurately represented what the asteroid belt actually looks like? Thanks for the question, Joel. I know this is a bit shocking, but the asteroid belt hasn't always been portrayed terribly accurately in most blockbuster movies. If you were orbiting an asteroid inside our solar system's asteroid belt, you wouldn't be able to see big cratered surfaces of other asteroids flying right next to you. In fact, probably look just like distant points of light. That's because the average separations between most asteroids in the asteroid belt are much larger than their actual sizes, so they really just look like dots. In fact, an average distance between two asteroids can be one million miles. However, among this spacious sea of odd-shaped rocks, exists a round ball. Ceres is the biggest asteroid in the solar system. The awesome 600-mile-wide rock contains a fourth of the entire mass of the asteroid belt. 
Most asteroids in the asteroid belt are lumpy shaped, kind of like potatoes. But Ceres is different. It's actually big enough to have enough mass, to have enough gravity, to crush itself into a round shape. 